In September 1978, a decision was made. It was a decision that would eventually lead to the relatively peaceful breakup of the Soviet Union, ending the Cold War, and allowing the information age to flourish. And that decision was appointing Mikhail Gorbachev to the Central Committee. Gorbachev we now know as the eighth and the last Secretary General of the Soviet Union. The pre-context of Gorbachev's reign in the office was mainly focused on building up the nation's military, even if it meant less investment on development in the national level. Also, the previous brutal suppression of Warsaw Pact countries and Soviet states by Stalin, Khrushchev, and Brezhnev made everybody distrust and fear the Soviet leaders. Thus, as a young idealist and an instigator of change in the Soviet Union, Gorbachev wanted to change the system significantly. His major reforms were Sinatra Doctrine, Perestroika, and Glasnost. Sinatra Doctrine allowed the Eastern Bloc governments to be more autonomous. Perestroika allowed further independent actions from various ministries and introduced free market reforms. Glasnost was an unprecedented attempt to liberate the mass media and activate people's freedom of expression, permitting even criticisms of government officials. Naturally, but through numerous trial and errors, Gorbachev played a fundamental role in upturning the military, cultural, political, and diplomatic air in Soviet Union. How was he, then, able to bring such enlightening reforms to successful end? The secret lies in his personal life and personality. First off, he was born into a poor but hard-working Ukrainian-Russian peasant family and spent his teen years mostly in the so-called collective farms. He even underwent Soviet famine. Such harsh background persisted when he later on studied law and entered elite politics. An intelligent and idealist personality, combined with the strength of a hard-working peasant background, gave him a perfect qualification for becoming a successful reformist. Second, from within his own parties and country, he was portrayed as a teacher, a mentor, thanks to his open-minded, compassionate personality. Gorbachev had a great desire to reach out to the common people. And instead of using rhetoric like his precedents, Gorbachev went through towns and villages, encouraging people to freely voice out their thoughts. That replaced former distrust and hatred. As is shown in the recent email with the Russian, Gorbachev has gained huge support from his citizens up until now. From the status quo at the time, he wanted to move on together with the people, rather than leading them in the front. Gorbachev was a leader whose priority was gaining people's trust and acceptance. He certainly opened up a new face for his people and Russia as a whole.